All right. What's going on? I hope that you've had a wonderful Memorial Day weekend. I know that I have. I'm just now getting back from a very long vacation. I'm setting up my studio kind of all wonkily. I have no clue if everything's all organized, but let's get into today's topic, which is going to be about the fact that a majority of us seem to lack empathy. A lot of us by nature seem to have much apathy instead of empathy towards other strangers. No duh, you know, obviously if I don't know somebody, I'm not going to be inclined to care about them the same way that I care about my mom or my significant other, right? Well, that's natural. And to, to me, it seems like a lot of times whenever people say, oh, I'm equally empathetic to everybody around me and sunshine and rainbows, and that's just not true. I mean, deep in human nature and deepest in parts in our hearts, we are apathetic by nature. We just don't care, and we're not sorry that we don't care. <laughs> I mean, think about how it comes to human survival, right? We want to look out for ourselves because our survival comes first. Except for when it comes to our kids, obviously they come first, but I'm talking in a general sense, all right? So survival of the fittest, you're witnessing a robbery happening to somebody else, are you gonna go and jump in and be Superman and save the day and to, you know, fight against the people that have a seven inch knife in their pocket? Are you gonna save the day for that person that's getting robbed right now? No, more than likely, you know, don't say that you would. If you wouldn't actually be prepared to deal with that situation. Some of you have a concealed carry license and maybe you'd happen to have your gun on you and then you could go and help the situation, sure. But for a majority of people, we're not just walking around carrying guns that are able to defend ourselves with. What about a car wreck? Think about a car wreck. You know, when you see a car wreck on the side of the freeway, what do you do? You're already in your car, safe and sound. You're gonna pass by and you're look at, gonna look over at the car wreck like, I wonder what happened. You know, but you're not gonna jump out of your car and then go and help the situation because you're not qualified to help for the situation. And quite frankly, you have somewhere else you need to be. These kind of situations happen all the time where we're apathetic to a situation, even though we might think that we want to be empathetic, like, I really hope that nobody died in that accident, or I hope that the, the thieves didn't steal anything of heavy value from that person that they robbed. You know, we could still be empathetic, but we can't do anything about it. But why is this? Is this something that is learned throughout life? Is it inherited through genetics? Is it something that we pick up through childhood and then we grow into adulthood realizing that the world's just so messed up and we need to look after ourselves first? Where exactly did all of this originate from, essentially? Why are we so apathetic instead of empathetic by nature? And like really quick, because like one of my friends has trouble understanding the difference between apathy versus empathy. Apathy? Being apathetic means that you don't care. You lack feelings or care for a situation that's happening. And then empathy is the opposite of that, where you do care. You have feelings for a situation or a video or something happened and you're empathetic about it. You have feelings for it and you genuinely care and get upset that something bad is happening to another person. Okay, so with that little quick dictionary lesson out of the way, let's take a little quick tour. I don't know how many of you live in a city, but if you do ever visit a city and you're walking down a sidewalk, how many of the strangers that you're passing, thousands of people that you're passing in a city sidewalk, out of those thousands of people, how many of those people do you look at in the eyes and have empathy for their situation? Maybe it's raining and they don't have an umbrella. Are you feeling empathetic? Are you feeling apathetic? Are you feeling anything at all to all these strangers that you pass by? Let's dial it even one step further. Let's say you're with two other friends right now. You have three people, you and two friends. Do you care about what other people are doing at the bar or at the store or where people are going or the people driving around you? No, no, you don't care. You just care that you're having fun with your friends. That's why I say that we are naturally apathetic towards other people around us. And we're really not sorry about it either. We're not sorry about being apathetic creatures. So then why does it matter if you don't know someone? 
If you don't know someone, why should you care whether or not you feel empathetic towards people or not? Why should you care if you have feelings or if you have like thoughts about what's going on with this person? They're just minding their own business. They're over there enjoying themselves. And you know, you don't care about what they're doing. After all, those random strangers on the sidewalk, they're not helping you, you're not helping them. None of this matters then, right? Well, actually it does matter. When you do interact with strangers, it's not often, but if you do happen to interact with strangers, you always want to hold empathy with them. Because being cold and apathetic with strangers that you meet randomly is going to give you a bad taste and them bad taste. And sure, you're not gonna ever meet them again, probably, but I mean, think about it this way. Has it ever happened to you where you'll hold the door for someone and they say, hey, thanks. And you're like, no problem, I hope you enjoy your dinner or I hope you have a good workout. And then you come back two or three days later and that guy that happened, that you held the door for is at that same event. And then he comes up to you and says, hey, you were that guy that held the door for me. You know, how's your, how have you been? Okay, that probably won't happen. He probably ain't gonna do that, but he will at least remember you. And if he remembers you and you happen to remember him, you can go up and say, hey, enjoying your workout, enjoying your meal, whatever. You can interact with people in that way. Even doing something as simple as just holding a door for them or asking them permission if you know, somebody's using this equipment right here or if somebody's sitting at this table next to you, you know, there's always an interaction that happens with strangers at one point or another. Even if you're just sitting at a crosswalk waiting for the, the, the light to turn you know, the walking man or whatever, you know? Even if you're waiting for the walking light to turn on, you can still have conversations with strangers right next to you. What are you here for? Are you here for an event? You know, stuff like that. You can, there's always interactions. And when you do have those interactions, it is so key to be empathetic and present with those people that you're actually interacting with because it gives your it makes your mood better it makes their mood better the overall group dynamic is better if they're with a group maybe some of them will be more inclined to talk with you and then you all of a sudden have like four like six seven people all just interacting at a crosswalk for no reason and then 30 seconds goes by, you've crossed the crosswalk, it's like, okay, have a good day. You know, and then you split apart and now both of your days are just better and now you're kind of more in the mood and everything. And then another key thing about this, which is, comes back to you, is when you practice having empathy towards strangers, it helps you affiliate bonds with people that you are already friends with. It helps you interact with the people that you know better. It allows you to be more present with the people that you know, that you wanna be friends with, that you're already friends with, and the existing bonds that you have with people can get stronger because you learn how to interact in a more positive, friendly way. And this actually also comes back to basic biology too. Okay, it all circles into this one giant sphere and we connect the sphere again into the fact that being apathetic uses less energy in our minds compared to being empathetic. Because think about how much energy you use just to not care and walk down the street. You don't have to spend time or energy interacting with anyone. You don't have to worry about whether or not somebody's having a good day or a bad day. You don't have to worry about what am I gonna say. You don't have to worry about any of that. You're just apathetic, you're walking along, you're minding your own business, survival of the fittest. It doesn't take much energy to just walk and be apathetic, but it uses a lot more energy to be more empathetic and interact with people and all this good jazz and actually intermingling and everything. So because it uses more energy, we're less inclined to want to interact with people. It's basic biology, really. When you really cut it down to core concept, it really is just a basic biology. Being apathetic uses less energy. Being empathetic uses more energy. Now, am I saying that you have to be inviting and caring to every single person in the world? No, I'm not saying that. There's always gonna be some people that are not deserving of your time. Don't let these other people that wasted your time and hurt you think that they can come back into your life just because you're practicing more empathy and practicing your social skills. Do not allow them to think that they can come back into your life. If people have wasted your time before and if they have 
wronged you and if they have done you dirty and stolen from you or taken your time or wasted your time or something if if there have been people that you have met that have genuinely detracted from your life do not allow them back into your life you can practice empathy with any other person that you want with random strangers with your friends with co-workers with anyone but do not allow people that don't want the best for you in your life do not allow them to waste your time your space your money your valuables do not allow Allow them into your life or your circle and I promise you that when you set up these barriers for yourself and the friends that you actually care about that care about you the inner circle that you have with and the bonds that you create with people that actually care become even more stronger because you respect yourself you respect your friends and you respect the people that respect you back and it becomes an absolute infinity loop of just positivity beginning positivity so please, please trust me when I say that, that being empathetic to strangers is not inviting other people that did you wrong to continue to do you wrong. Do not misunderstand this message. Respecting yourself will always come first before you should respect other people. But anyways, I thank you for coming by for another one of my videos. Please subscribe to my channel since I'm new here. Give my video a like or a dislike depending on how you feel. Leave a comment below telling me, do you always feel empathetic towards other people? Because I promise you that you probably don't if you really think about it. But if you do, prove me wrong. I mean, you know, say in the comments below, yeah, whenever I go to a hippie festival, I always... Okay, but hippie festivals are hippie festivals, dude. Everybody cares about everybody there. But all that aside, thanks for coming by. I'll look forward to seeing you in the next one. Have a great day, mate.